So um, I'm really excited to present the next speaker. Over the past few days, I've gotten to know Dr. Rich Blundell. If any of you have spoken with him, um, you know that um, he is quite a visionary. And as I was trying to figure out how to introduce him, um, it's, it's actually, um, I really struggled with how to introduce such an interesting person. So I am humbled to share his story with you, and I'll be introducing him shortly. But what, what is he? I'm trying to put, I was trying to put a label on who he is, and you really can't, because he's so many things. He's a scientist, he's an ecologist, he's a conservationist, he's a philosopher. He also has a PhD in cosmic evolution, which is incredible. Talk to him about it. Cool. Uh, but most of all, I would say he's also, um, and he's also a change agent. And that's, I think, what we need more of uh, today. And I'm really excited to share his story with you. So first, I'm going to share this video, and then he's going to come up, talk, and we also have a, a Q&A prepared. So thank you. So with that, I'd like to introduce Dr. Rich Blundell. So I think, um, so he's such a, an interesting history, such an interesting array of experiences, and I know we are a little bit compressed for time, so we're going to get right into it. So much of your work has been centered around this concept of Oika. Can you share with us what that entails? I can. Um, oika. It's, uh, it comes from the Greek word, ancient Greek word oikos, which means basically home. Uh, in, the, in the ancient Greek conception, it meant more like a house. It, it's the root of the word eco, as in ecology, and the word economy, which is actually meaningful in this sense. But basically, it means home. Um, I'll just go a little further to say this, yes. that I'm an ecologist. For me, oika means it's the intelligence of nature, that there's, a, that there's an intelligence embedded deep within nature that actually precedes our intelligence. I study the history of the universe, and that includes the history of the earth, the history of nature on earth. And when you study it, you realize that intelligence was going before we showed up. There is an intelligence in nature. Um, but the good news is, because we're a part of nature, we can feel that intelligence. In fact, that's why we can feel it. It's because we are part of nature. That's why we can feel it. And guess what? It feels good. The intelligence of nature, when you feel it coming through you, it feels really good. Um, and I think um, we can also express it. So when we're, when, we're, when we're aware of this intelligence, when we get to know it, when we become familiar, when, it becomes part of, when we become part of the family of nature, um, we can express it. We can live by that intelligence. I think a lot of our culture and you know, the inheritance of accidents of history have somewhat divorced us from this intelligence, and we're feeling it, and I think the conversations that we've been having, the conversation this, this, this earlier with Michael about how wellness seems to be absent, is a symptom of that, of that divorce. And uh, Oika is about trying to restore that intelligence, getting us to feel it. Um, as I said, I'm a scientist, and so I, I study the history of, of, of nature. And, um, um, one, one thing I, I just want to say that ecology is the science of relationships. And when we think about ecology, we think about it as the relationship between this bird and that tree, or that insect and the amount of rainfall. Or it, we tend to think of it in terms of the things out in nature. But ecology is the study of relationships, right? Humans are a part of nature too, so ecology is the study of human relationships. In fact, ecology is the study of our relationship. Our relationships. It's the relationships between me and this chair right now, it could be. So I think of ecology as this incredibly broad study of relationships. And when you do that, you realize that, you know, it's not just talk, this thing that we're connected to nature. 
it's actually an inescapable truth. If you study long enough and hard enough and you realize that that's not just an idea or a sentiment, it's, it's an empirical fact. Um, and that's you know, part of what you see in this video is me tracking the story of the cosmos, you know, starting in the, in the Big Bang. Actually, I start a little bit before the Big Bang. I start in the mystery before the Big Bang. But that mystery doesn't go away. It's still here. It's in this room. So I, I, I always try to start any talk of cosmic evolution in mystery and then keep that mystery alive because it's still here. You know, we, science is very limited in how it knows the world. And so there's always still a mystery. And I guess what I'm trying to get at here is, and, and we can get to the next question, but I, I, my proposal here, the reason I'm here, there's, first of all, I want to say this. I want to just quickly read the mission statement for um, GSN. It, part of it says, um, I don't know, my glasses on, so it's going to be tough. The sustainability movement is at a crossroads in defining the path that will be taken towards either a life-sustaining course of action or a life-depleting route. And thus, we find ourselves square at the center of the wellness movement. The future of wellness may be when human beings are able to reconnect with the awareness that we are, are part of one cycle of life, finding resonance among each other and understanding the well-being we seek can be found in well-being with each other. That's, that's why I'm here. This is like my call to action. Like what, what, what a guy that you just saw up there or an ecologist you know, be doing in this room. That's my work described there, is to take seriously this idea that we can reconnect with the cycle of life, the, cycle, the, 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 the rhythms of nature, nature itself. I'm taking that seriously. I'm taking it so seriously that it's a science. I'm taking it so seriously that it's a form of spirituality, even. That's, that's why I'm here. Um, and one last thing I just want to say before we get, get back into the conversation is that as I studied this whole grand arc of cosmos, the cosmos, nature, that brought us all here today, I realized that um, when you're in right relationship with nature, with the world, What feels good is good. And you guys are in the feel-good industry, right? Maybe I'm wrong, but I'm still pretty naive. I think you're in, the, I think you're in like the self-care, right? But when you're in, when the self is deeply, it feels deeply embedded in nature, when the self is in right relationship to nature, self-care, lo and behold, is world care. It's the world, when you take care of yourself, and you're in right relationship, that's the key. Like, that's the caveat here, is that you've gotta be in right relationship. But if you're in right relationship, self-care is world care. Healing the self is healing the world. I think that's like a wicked powerful opportunity. So Amen. I'm from Massachusetts. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and, and I wanna also frame this that, that's the light, okay, but we're also in a moment. There's another Greek word I want to introduce. It's, you probably know this one, chronos, right? That's linear time. The Greeks had a word for linear time called chronos. They have another word for time called kairos. It's not linear, it's, it's a different kind of time that is a moment of profound transformation, right? That there's a, it's almost a crisis. Has anyone heard the term the meta crisis? Anyone? Well. That's what we're in. We're in a convergence of crises. The crises this, crises that. There's mental crises, there's economic crises, there's climate crisis, there's... Fundamentally, it all boils down to a crisis of consciousness, a crisis of separation, I believe, from nature. I believe that's at the, that's at the source of all of these crises. I forget what my point was, but... Um, <laughs> that, that we're in a moment that the inflection point, as new technologies are coming online right now, that we've gotten glimpses of. We, the first glimpse we got was when the algorithms took over social media, and look at what it's done. I mean, we're all old enough to have seen the rise of this situation, 
and we see what it's done. We're feeling it. You're feeling it in your industry. We're feeling it in our lives. And um, that was just the first iteration of artificial intelligence, was the, the algorithms that would curate content for us. We're now entering into the next phase of this artificial intelligence world, which has gone from curation to creation. It's starting, ChatGPT, as powerful and as useful as it is, and I use it too, it's creating a world, okay? It's gone from curating content to now creating a reality for us. The next phase is even gonna be more insidious, okay? We're gonna go from curation to creation to control, if we're not careful. In fact, it's kind of inevitable. That's where artificial intelligence is taking us. So my proposal here is that we restore natural intelligence as a response to artificial intelligence before it's too late. And that's where I think your industry finds another level of relevance. We need what you do now more than ever. Uh, again, I might be naive, but I just think that there's a powerful moment here and, and I, I want to be a part of it and I want to help you be a part of it if, if, if you're up for it. Uh, I think there's this incredible healing moment. So that's why I'm here and um, that's why I brought Oika here to introduce it to this. And I know this is like a sub niche of a niche. Uh, and so, but that's perfect. That's, I used to say if I could just reach 10% of people with this message, then, we, you know, then we'd have a chance. I've, I've reduced my goals down, I'm at 1%. And then I had to actually reduce it again. So I'm actually at 0.1%. So 0.1% of you reach out to me after this. Then we, we, I think you know, we're on the right track. So I just, sorry if that went long or went off track, but I just wanted to get it all out there uh, so that we could go from here. So, okay. Yeah, I, I think what I'm going to do is kind of fast forward to our thesis. So we talk about transformation. And as you pointed out, we're an industry of spa professionals here. So spa professionals are in the unique position. Um, but what, can we talk about something tangible or even intangible that we as professionals can do? Because not all of us can be forward-thinking ologists and change agents. Why not? Um, well, <laughs> what, are, what are the degrees that we can do that in? Um, because I'm, I'm, a, I'm actually not, but pretend I'm a spa director, I can't like go out and walk in nature like half of the day or my tea will revolt. Okay, <laughs> okay, but we can, we can pull that apart. Uh, um, first of all, I think, the, first of all, your slide with the, the pyramid that had the assumptions on, that had the assumptions as part of that pyramid, such a great word. We live by a lot of assumptions, and there, were, there are assumptions embedded in what you said. AI is also gonna change a lot of those things that keep, us, that keep us in the grind, that keep us from the things we care about, and like those crabs that get pulled back, you know, that's going on, and so those things are gonna, I'm trying to tell you, we are, we are the next decade, every industry is gonna be disrupted. Everything about our lives is going to be disrupted. So we need to take a look at these assumptions. Now's our opportunity to rethink our assumptions, redesign our assumptions about what we want to spend our lives doing. Okay, we don't, so I think to assume that we're not all going to have an opportunity to learn about who we are. In fact, I think that's actually the purpose of life that's been taken from us is that somehow, slowly over time, figuring out, what was the, you said figuring out who we are? It was something about, somebody today had a line about, it takes a lifetime, who was it? Was Christy, it, Christy. What, Christy said it, right, she said. A lifetime to find who you are. Find who you are, and I said, I, when she said that, I was so like happy because that's kind of what a life is for. And but we've, that's been taken from us. And that's what this story, by the way, that I tell, this cosmic story, that's our story, that's your story. But we don't know it. Like, we should all know the story of where we come from. That's our, that's our origin story. Everybody in this room, on every continent, on this planet, from every ethnicity, that's our shared origin story. That's the one thing that can actually unite us, that transcends political divisions, transcends 
Racial divisions transcends class, everything. That's the story that can unite us. That's the kind of story that can, that can start to really heal. Um, my point there is just that we are about to enter into this transformative time, and AI is gonna usher these changes. So now is, the ch now is our chance to, to, be, to prepare for a radically different world. And so I think we should be thinking about this individually, like how are we going to individually adapt, but how can our collective, your collective, also respond to this moment? Because there's gonna be a lot of uh, for lack of a better word, uh, refugees, cultural refugees, seeking meaning. And I think that should be part of the wellness recipe. Like, why isn't wellness giving people meaning where meaning has been lost? And so, um, the question was, what can we individually do? The first thing I think is to just be prepared to think differently. Get curious again about what the future can be. Because I have a saying that I use, the future is beautiful, or there isn't one. So what's the beautiful future? That, that, because now we have an opportunity to create, that's what the Kairos means, that there's a transformation happening, and there's an opportunity embedded within it. That opportunity is the future that we want to create. Okay, I know this all sounds idealistic and naive. It is not naive, it is idealistic. So that's the first thing that we can all do, is prepare ourselves mentally for the disruption, for the changes that are gonna take place. Not see them as threats, not see them as, you know, see them as the end of something, but let's make it the end of the thing that we're all complaining about. The thing that's making us stressed out and the thing that's, you know, creating the anxieties. Uh, and so what does this have to do with this story? Well, if you come with me this afternoon on this Earth story, I'll begin to show you how, how deeply embedded we are in nature. I'll, I'll start, we'll start to cultivate that feeling of the, the nature that's within all of us and that good feeling that I was talking about. You know, we can have it. We can start to really take the time to start cultivating that sense of belonging in the world. So those are, those are two things. Get ready for radical, radical change in our lives. It's an inner, it's, this is a, be ready to change the way you think, change your assumptions. And, and the third thing, and I've been thinking about this all day, like what, what else could I, what, what other practical step could I offer you? And this is gonna sound self-promotional, but it isn't. But you can reach out to me, and, and we can talk about how whatever it is you're doing, we can start to, to, to develop. I, I have a whole network of highly creative people. I work with a lot of artists, a few, forward-thinking scientists, some people in philosophy, some philanthropists. So if, you know, let's reach out to me and let's think about how we can start to integrate deep ecological principles in whatever it is you're doing. Wherever you fall in the stack here, wherever you fall on the spectrum of the wellness industry, if, you, if you're interested in really deeply reintegrating nature the experience and the feeling of being nature again into your programs and into your, your infrastructure. Reach out to me, let me know. Sorry. Not at all. So we attempted to fit our an hour, an hour conversation into like 25 minutes. So that's, that's what's happening here. But I think the, the theme is around transformation, there is a huge opportunity for spa professionals here being in this self-care self-care industry. And, and I really encourage you to go on the um, Earth Story Walk and hear more about Rich, because I feel like we've really cut this short. But I know that we have meetings starting in like three minutes. So let me just say one last thing. Well, let me just tell you real quickly what the Earth Story Walk is. It's, it's, we'll start somewhere out here. We'll go for a walk, and I'm gonna tell you the history of the planet. And so it's a 4.6 billion year story, but I'm gonna tell you the story in a way that eventually the planetary story becomes the personal story, becomes your story. And along the way, I'm gonna to explain to you how consciousness, human consciousness, emerged from this story. It goes from being a solar system story to a geological planetary story to a chemical story to 
and suddenly it becomes a biological story, and then it becomes a animal story, and then it becomes a consciousness story, and then it becomes a personal story. So that's, what, that's the function of this walk, is to show you how deeply embedded our consciousness is in the natural world. It's not just, an, a, a, it's not just a theory anymore. We've actually been able to track how our imaginations, our identities, our inner voice is deeply embedded in nature. So that's what the, that's what the, that's what the Earth Story Walk is. And wear comfortable shoes. So after your meetings, go grab shoes. Okay. All right. Thank you. That was very compact. Please check out his website. Before we break, <clears throat> excuse me, I have a question. Would any of you be terribly disappointed if we canceled the the architectural panel so that everyone could go on the walk with Dr. Rundell? Are we good? This is really your no, summit, no, so I'm, I'm curious if, if, if anyone had their heart really set on the panel. Yeah. You could do the panel virtually. Yeah. Great idea, yeah. Sean. Yeah. Let's go. No, we'll do. We'll do the walk. Okay. okay. So, You're amazing. Yeah, thank you. And thank you.